I've had a lot of content on this channel that people can debate to no end, but I think there's one point to make that we can all pretty much agree on. Uh, gaming is an expensive hobby. Uh, if you're talking about traditional gaming, so we'll say consoles and portables, uh, gaming can be expensive. Um, hardware is expensive, games certainly aren't cheap, and it adds up really quickly. And obviously the discussion about price is hot and heavy right now with the Switch because uh, people are trying to figure out, is it worth their money? Is the asking price too much or is it right on point? And uh, it's a tough discussion to cover, but, you know, I thought I'd give it a shot, just like they say in Fooly Cooly. Nothing can happen till you swing the bat. So I'm going to give the bat a swing and I'll, uh, I'll hop into the discussion and, and uh, offer up some points. A little, uh, little bit of detail here and there. I'm not going to get into the, the finer points of discussion because I know I'm not anywhere qualified to discuss it. Uh, I'm not qualified to discuss this stuff <laughs> anyway, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put my thoughts out there and see. I, I'm really interested to see where you guys uh, fall in line with it. Now we all know the price of the Switch, and uh, it's a little bit different in different parts of the world. And you can't just say, like, here's how much the Switch costs here, and this is the equivalent over there, because it doesn't, it doesn't work like that. There's intricacies that you need to break down for multiple regions, and there's a whole bunch of stuff that goes into that uh, consideration for, you know, weakness of a currency or... Uh, our taxes included and stuff like that. So it's different all over the place, but we have to start somewhere. So I'll go with the base of the Switch is $300 in the U.S. It's 29,980 yen in Japan. And as far as euros go, it's 299 euros. And again, I know Europe is the big one here because there's all different prices all over the place. So some places it's a little more, some places it's a little less. Obviously, they're not all using the euro. Uh, so it's really hard to peg down, but that, that's what I'm going with for just my, my starting point of the discussion. So now that we got that out of the way, I want to look at what comes in the Switch box and then get into uh, the value that's there. Now what comes in the Switch box? You have, well, you get the box itself, although that's not too exciting. You get uh, the Switch console, so you know the screen, that's what we're talking about. The dock, the left and right Joy-Cons. Uh, two Joy-Con wrist straps. You get the Joy-Con grip. Remember, that is not charging. That's just a grip. You get the HDMI cable, and you get the AC adapter. So when you plop your money down on the register, that's what you're getting in return. So you know what's in the box. Uh, is the price warranted? Is $300 for a Switch too much, uh, or is it is it spot on? Uh, it's, it's really hard. There's no right or wrong answer, of course. It's all about perceived value. And it's too hard to contemplate what the expanded audience or the person new to gaming will think uh, because they could operate in so many different ways you don't know. It's, it's too hard to predict. They could go in blind not knowing anything about the systems out there like Xbox One, PS4, and Switch and just be interested in getting a system. And they might, you know, compare prices and see that there's uh, bundles for the PS4 that include uh, a game that are the same price as the Switch. Or they might see one, two switch on the shelves and be like, "Oh, this is you know, this is the game that's interesting interests me the most," and then just pick up a switch for that. There's so many different reasons uh, why people uh, that you know don't follow gaming as much as we do pick up the systems or the soft and the software that they do. So there's too much to analyze and not enough data because it's that we we don't it's hard to follow the consumer that doesn't follow games we follow games so uh i'm i'm more interested in looking at the discussion uh as far as the traditional gamer goes and where uh where they feel the price should be at and what they're getting out of the system now i've been keeping track of comments for uh, the price discussion on the switch from all over the internet uh, my site on on the youtube channel uh, neogaf uh, any any number of outlets where or reddit for example where people are discussing price and you know it's a back and forth and it's ugly and that's you know that's the way the internet goes especially when it comes to uh, the gaming segment things uh, quickly devolve into shouting matches but i've been keeping tabs on what people are saying and when it comes to price detractors, they talk about uh, the horsepower of the system. So we're talking about the, the, what the system can do visually, like how many polygons it can push and how, how, just how much overall horsepower it has. 
Uh, and there's been a so that's by by far the biggest discussion when it comes to switch and price point. And then there's the uh, there's a, a much lesser discussion about storage space, not any less warranted or anything like that. But I see that point uh, brought up far less. Now, again, this might be just what I'm seeing, but I, I, it, that, from my wanderings about the Internet, that's what it seems like to me. Now, when you look at the pro price people, the, the people that are into Switch and defending the price, their points are uh, the tech that's inside the Joy-Cons. So you have HD rumble and you have the IR camera and you have NFC tech, you have that stuff. And then uh, that, like I said, that's the, on this side, that's the predominant part of the discussion for def defending price. And then also lumped in with there is the ability to take the system wherever you go. So it's not just a console, it's a portable as well. It's a two-in-one. So uh, these, are, these are what the two sides are offering up pretty much. Uh, obviously, there's other discussions in there. But these are what the two sides are offering up pretty much when it comes to uh, justifying the price or not, are saying the price is too much. I'm sure you probably guessed based on my other videos that uh, I'm more on the pro side of things. It's not like I'm like, yeah, I'm excited to pay $300. <laughs> I'm just saying uh, I'm on the side of the argument that says I believe the tech in the Joy-Cons to be worthy of a good amount of the, the value that you're getting out of the system. So I, I, that, in my mind, justifies price. But do I know that for sure? No, of course I don't because I'm not a developer. I'm not, I'm not working on a system. I haven't manufactured it. Uh, I don't know how pieces, parts break down and uh, break down into pricing and then how much, you know, what, what Nintendo's doing there to get to the, the amount they're at. It's just my own speculation. I feel like that tech in there holds value and that's how they're getting to that price point. Uh, am I right? No. Am I wrong? No, I, I don't know. Uh, and the same goes for the other side of the discussion. The people that are saying the system should be cheaper because it doesn't have the same sort of tech that's in PS4 or Xbox One when it comes to horsepower. Now, they could be looking at, you know, previous generation systems or other similar architecture in stuff like tablets or phones or whatever whatever they're looking at and say, here's how much this chip is, here's how much uh, this uh, tablet is, this is what the price should be at. Now, you know, neither side, uh, the majority of neither side is in the right place to be able to break down expenses like that because there's a whole bunch of things that go on uh, behind the scenes and into the making of this stuff to get to a justified price point. Uh, and there's lots of custom work going on. So, it, you know, uh, one side feels one way, one side feels the other, and we try and come from a point where we think is knowledgeable and then we get shot down. But uh, we're, we're not, none of us or the large majority of us aren't in a place to make those discussions and, uh, you know, come out with our points as fact. That's why I found this one interview that popped up really interesting. Uh, there was an interview with a whole bunch of Japanese developers concerning the Switch and the Switch's announcement. And some of these are developers that are working on Switch, some of them plan to work on Switch, and some of them haven't officially stated that they are going to support the system yet. But they were interviewed about their thoughts on the Switch uh, after the presentation that happened a couple weeks ago. So this is a fan translation from Nintendo Everything of what these guys said. Um, and they give some really interesting points. And uh, the one that's most interesting to me and for this discussion is what a handful of the developers said about the price. Now, I know I have to say this right before I get into the Japanese developer comments because the pricing for the Switch in Japan and the U.S. is different. The flat comparison of price isn't appropriate, but I know if I didn't say it, I'd get crap for it. So, again, price in the U.S. is $300. If you did just the flat comparison between price, in Japan, the price would be $265. First up, we have Gambarian's president, Chikako Yamakura, and he says... I was expecting the price to be 28,000 yen based on its performance, but I didn't think the dock and Joy-Con grip and everything would be included. They've packed those in anyway and still had the price of 29,980 yen. That's a fantastic value. Then we have Spike Chunsoft's Yuchiro Saito. He says, I was surprised they kept the price in that range considering it's got that huge screen and those two controllers. People are going to think, with a price like that? Bandai Namco's Katsuhiro Harada, it's the guy who does Tekken, just for a side note, he says, I wasn't expecting Nintendo to begin the presentation by announcing the price. The price is exactly what I'd expect from a marketing point of view, but if you want to count all the individual peripherals, the full thing is pretty cheap. 
And I say that as someone familiar with the inner workings of the system. I have no idea how they kept the price that low. We have Atsushi Inaba from Platinum Games, and he says, Platinum Games has already come out saying we're developing games for the Nintendo Switch, so we understand what the hardware is capable of, which is why the price was surprising. This thing is seriously cheap. I think it's the result of a tremendous amount of work, and it's an indication of their strong desire to see their hardware reach a lot of markets. Finally, we have Capcom's Hiroyuki Kobayashi, and he says, I was surprised by the release date and price. I thought it would be out I thought it would be out a little later than it is and be 30 something thousand yen. Five Japanese developers who in their own ways have said that the Switch or they believe the Switch to be uh, cheap, seriously cheap, pretty cheap. And some of them went the route of uh, what was in the box. They thought for everything that's in the box, it's cheap. And some of them said for what the hardware does, it's cheap. And then there's a combination of all those. And uh, I want to point out that, you know, I know people are going to say, well, like, look, Platinum, Platinum Games said the system's going to be cheap. Yeah, of course they did because they're making games for it and they want people to buy the system. <laughs> but we also have developers here who haven't officially announced what they're doing or if they're doing anything talking about price. Now, uh, earlier I said Joy-Cons, you know, that's my reason, that's part of my reasoning for why I believe to be the price to be where it's at and why I feel it's justified. Uh, but, you know, I, I said I, I'm, I'm, that's just my own speculation, so I'm more than willing to default to developers who uh, work with hardware and create software for a living and have a better understanding of where those things come from, where that pricing sits and how they get to that point, so... And again, this is the opinion of some developers, because there were other developers that didn't say anything about price. There were no developers that said it was overpriced. Um, but this, that's the opinion of these guys. But if I'm going to default to an opinion, I, I'm going to go with the guys who actually work on game hardware for a living. So that's the end of the discussion, right? You have Japanese developers saying that they think the system's cheap, and people that are talking about price saying it's too expensive. Or you can just be like, well, look, guys that actually make games and have been working on hardware for a long time say the thing's cheap. So there you go. Of course, that's not the end of it, nor, <laughs> nor should it be. Uh, it's all about the perception of value. And again, I'm looking at this from a, from a gamer standpoint because that's something, that's an area where I can hone in a little bit more on. Uh, and as I said, uh, there are people who just think $300 is too high for a system that does, or a system that has the graphical horsepower that the Switch does. So these developers could say this, and Nintendo could, in another alternate universe, come out and break down every piece and part, every spec, every detail, price it out, and show you how they got to the value point that they did. And those people will disagree. And, you know, that price is relative to the person that's spending the money. And if a gamer is thinking that it's too much, then it's too much. They might say for the graphical power, they might say they don't think the third-party support's going to be there. And again, that's speculation for now. But they'll say, I don't want to spend 300 bucks on a system that only, that only lets me play Nintendo games. And the other side of the argument will say, well, look, we got these Japanese developers saying that the price is, is warranted and... Uh, talking about the tech in there, and all of it makes sense to us, and, you know, we're not right either. We're not right or wrong. It's just the discussion that'll rage on forever. But I thought the, uh, I, I thought the comments from the Japanese developers were very interesting, and I thought they played, uh, or I thought they gave us a unique perspective into the conversation. Uh, and I'd be interested to see where people come at from now, uh, considering this stuff. I, and I'm suspecting that, Nothing's going to change, and it doesn't have to. I was just curious, which is why I'm putting this video out there. Uh, I want to know where you guys sit at value. Uh, and we're talking about just the Switch uh, like core box itself. We're not talking about the price of controllers outside of that and uh, other, other accessories and things like that, because that's a whole different discussion. I'm just looking at the core value of the system itself um, and uh, just what's inside the box. So uh, let me know what you think, hit up the comments, and uh, <laughs> I, t I tell you to keep it civil, but I know it's not going to happen, but try to, do your best, and uh, let's see what you guys have to say. Hey guys, RMC here from Go Nintendo. If you like what you saw in the video, why don't you give us a thumbs up and maybe even subscribe, we'd love to have you. If you want to see what else we're up to, you can check out GoNintendo.com for 24-hour Nintendo news. You can visit us on Facebook at Facebook.com slash GoNintendo. You can check us out on Twitter at Twitter.com slash GoNintendoTweet. And we're even over on Instagram at Instagram.com slash GoNintendo. I put all the links in the description just to make it easier for you guys to follow. Thanks a lot!